Today, it seems like every publicly traded company worth its salt has a market capitalization in the tens of billions of dollars. Household names and economic titans of industry like Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft are valued in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Last fall, Apple's market cap topped over a trillion dollars, making it the world's first trillion dollar company. Flashback to the start of the 20th century, where a man named John Pierpont Morgan was able to consolidate industry competitors to form the first billion dollar company in world history. This is the story of JP Morgan in the formation of US Steel. JP Morgan was born into a wealthy, influential family on April 17, 1837 in Hartford, Connecticut. A little known fact about Morgan's family is that the Christmas classic, Jingle Bells, was written by Morgan's uncle, James L. Pierpont. The song was originally titled The One Horse Open Sleigh and was actually written about Thanksgiving. Interestingly enough, the song was considered a failure when it was published in 1857. As a young man, Morgan went into the world of banking and commerce, following in his father's footsteps. In 1871, Morgan became a partner in the firm Drexel, Morgan & Company, which would eventually be reorganized into J.P. Morgan & Company. Morgan's firm would go on to become one of the most powerful banking houses in the world, simultaneously making Morgan one of the most powerful individuals in the world. Morgan would go on to use his power throughout his life to accomplish many extraordinary feats. Before the year 1913, when the Federal Reserve was created, the United States did not have the safety net of a central bank. Morgan played a part in steering the United States away from crisis on multiple occasions. Two years after the Panic of 1893, Morgan lent a bond offering that loaned the United States over $60 million, which is approximately $1.8 billion in today's dollars accounting for inflation. The Panic of 1893 had a severe impact on the state of the U.S. economy and led to the closure of 500 banks and 15,000 businesses. Unemployment skyrocketed during the panic, with rates hitting 35% in New York, 25% in Pennsylvania, and 43% in Michigan. Morgan's part gave the U.S. government an influx of cash that aided in ending the recession two years later. On another occasion, during the panic of 1907, J.P. Morgan conducted a meeting with top financiers to bail out failing financial institutions suffering from bank runs to stabilize the markets and ease fear among depositors. Morgan received a great amount of praise for his actions and service to the country by fellow Wall Streeters. However, many progressives began to evaluate the incredible amount of power someone like J.P. Morgan can yield and use to their own personal benefit. These inferences help stem the creation of the Federal Reserve. By the end of the 19th century, the railroad industry was extremely saturated. Morgan became involved in the consolidation of many of the struggling companies who did not have the market share necessary for survival, controlling almost 20% of American rail lines. During this time, Morgan also began consolidating small steel companies which would go on to form Federal Steel. He then set his eyes on Andrew Carnegie and his company, Carnegie Steel. Carnegie was initially against the merger with Federal Steel, but after Carnegie Steel President Charles Schwab convinced him, the first billion dollar company in world history, United States Steel Corporation, was born. For comparison, the size of U.S. Steel's market cap upon its founding was comparable in size to companies like MetLife and Marriott International. In its first year, U.S. Steel was the sole producer of more than two-thirds of the country's steel. One reason that U.S. Steel was so successful was because it had control over almost every factor in the development of its product. The company was able to supply itself with the necessary materials, manufacture the steel itself, and even the ships to transport the iron ore, which significantly enables the ability to cut costs. This level of logistics and this size of a company nowadays can only be dreamed of. Unless you're the leader of a cartel, of course, but let's assume you're not for the sake of the video. Problems began a few years after inception when President Theodore Roosevelt began enforcing regulations on trust more strictly than previous presidents. Technically, the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890 was supposed to prevent monopolistic behavior by corporations. But if that was the case, the United States Steel Corporation may have never existed. 
In 1905, the U.S. Justice Department began investigating the company to see if it was in violation of antitrust laws and filed a lawsuit against them in 1911. The case lasted a grueling nine years before ending in U.S. Steel's favor, allowing the company to remain as one and not be broken up into several smaller companies. Sadly, Morgan would not survive the duration of the lawsuit. J.P. Morgan was supposed to be on the maiden voyage of the RMS Titanic in 1912. However, it is believed that Morgan came down with an illness and had to cancel his trip, saving his life for the time being. Unfortunately for Morgan, he passed away a year later on March 31st, 1913. John Pierpont commanded such respect in the financial world that on the day of his funeral, the New York Stock Exchange did not open until noon to honor his life. The following decades took U.S. Steel on a roller coaster of economic activity, with an explosion in growth from production for the World War I war machine to a severe contraction in the Great Depression, to once again recovering thanks to a second world war. Following World War II, U.S. Steel's market share began to dwindle as they faced foreign competition. Things would not get easier as the years rolled on as the company would face issues involving closing smaller component businesses, employee strikes, and an increasing necessity to diversify the company's holdings away from steel. U.S. Steel is still in business to this day and trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker X. Although it is valued at only a fraction of what it once was, U.S. Steel is still a successful and well-run business by most standards, doing over $14 billion in revenue in 2018, which was up 15% from the previous year. J.P. Morgan's legacy lives on as the namesake for the largest bank in the United States, J.P. Morgan Chase, with total assets of over $2.5 trillion.